Well, that's the first nail in the coffin for Catface there, as FlyQuest are going to have a strong showing over on Vine Peak. Taking <laughs> out this series. Now, Potter, they're just one map away from securing their spot in the main event. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> I got to stick with my narratives about Lotus going into here, into map two. Uh, you know, hopefully, at least for Catface, they, it should be easy fixes, right? Mm -hmm. um, but but we got we to gotta at least highlight some of these clips coming out here for Dodo Nut. I mean, such crisp plays. I mean, so many times Vans was saying headhunter, headhunter yeah. this half, and it was because it was just, it was so damn clean. At that point, I thought I thought it was yay, and I was like, is it going to bleed or something? Like, that was some <laughs> crazy shots that was coming out there. And I even saw the chat actually uh, just popping off and saying that Donut was doing the yay cosplay, like with these shots right mm. here. So insane from side shots to face to face to the, this triple kill it tore for a quad kill into the round. She's been on point. And the crazy thing is, she wasn't even on the top of the scoreboard. And the other teammate that we highlighted as the other superstar player is Emily that was just popping off at the same time as well. So when these two players are really loose in the server and they're feeling it, it's so hard to play against. <laughs> it's absolutely terrifying to go up against. So uh, definitely it feels a little bad there for Catface going on in the first game. And that's something they're really going to have to try and see how they're going to bounce back later on because as you said when it's not quite donut with the top amount of kills though she will secure herself the mvp spot don't yeah. worry you're going up against an absolutely terrifying flag quest here potter same you absolutely are yeah same acs i mean they <laughs> tied it up but <laughs> gotta give the race some love i mean emily was everywhere uh, absolutely opening things up with the satchels and you know, we talked about how clean, how, how reliant and dependent FlyQuest were is sticking to their game plan. And it's because it works out so well. I mean, they were disciplined as heck. And I'm expecting more along the same lines going into Lotus here. Yeah. And, and just to add one more thing, Sara Sierra is uh, on the score, but we didn't really see too much there on what was happening for the KDA portion of that of that lineup. Hey. But man, yeah, A. Not not A for Alex, but A for, you know, the assists that you actually had there coming out from that sky. I mean, that was that was some great job being done for FlyQuest as a whole, as a unit. And again, I just have to go back to those two eco rounds that they won against uh, Catface. Mm. It didn't even really look like any type of trap plays at all. It's just like, wait, how, how are these classic winning fights face-to-face -face and then backstabs are coming through? So that's, that's a big question mark for me right there to be like, if FlyQuest doesn't need to dig deep into these trap plays with a full eco to win rounds i'm still afraid looking at cafes yes maybe they could fix some things but looking at lotus is it's not gonna be easy <laughs> that's for sure and second off vans don't apologize you're the duo of a world champion here that's all right true. it's fine it's fine <laughs> i don't apologize for anything potter's got my back potter's got my back right potter <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's let's yeah. let's throw out some random stats here. Uh... <laughs> oh, okay, no, no, no. okay, maybe maybe a little apology. What about some non-random stats here? Because uh, we highlighted Emily and Donut at the start of this, and let's just go back to that because frankly, Potter, they just lived up to the expectation we set up for them. They definitely did. They definitely did. And you know, you have a pretty good time when you're a duelist and when you're a raise, just flying around everywhere, when you're a chamber, when you are prepared and you know exactly when you can expect the help, when you can expect the utility, where your teammates are going to be, and when those rotations are going to come. So, I, I mean, again, clean, calm, and collected for FlyQuest. And, and it's good to see. It's good to see that they're able to look this clean, uh, especially going into the more important matches matches coming up yeah i think too it's a composure that would be nice to see going forward from them not just into the next map but if they win it out into the main event because it will definitely take them far but they still have one more map to get through to make it to that main event they will be going into their pick of lotus though i mean catface they did just come off of this map in their series against misfits it looked really strong with the retakes but that was still a map vans that really did go the distance so i'm curious now how FlyQuest will be able to do up against them here or if this is just going to be them running it into yeah i mean even for me i just kind of want to put potter on the on the spot as well and ask like <laughs> Ever since we've seen basically Fracture leaving and Pearl leaving, Lotus has been like a mainstay of like a main map that we like to play. Like what, what made Lotus like the go-to map for so many teams? 
it's just it's very straightforward it's very straightforward objective focused and the type of info that you get on the map it makes your players just feel pretty confident that their reads are their reads right so you're able to be pretty decisive on the map it's definitely been the flavor of the month for the past couple of months and um if you're again we have to talk about it if you're cat face coming in you're gonna need more than two rounds on yeah. the attack side of things you need to give yourself some wiggle room going in um because just you can't expect to have to claw your way back into an ot and have heroic moments time and time again right yeah. so definitely a, a, a more aggressive or a more faster hot pace start for cat face is exactly what they need here yeah i like i like to echo that as well because when you're looking at how they played that matchup against misfits where you only are really like what, what one initiator with that sky right so a lot of that comes down to the defaulting to try to listen and hear what the west of that utility is coming from if that pressure is happening towards that a main with the raise if the pressure is happening towards c and try to rework the map that way and those pivotal doors really changes the pace in the fast the quick turn basically on turn eight to make it to the final point and get that plant down. So if there's going to be a little bit more aggression, less, not necessarily a hesitation, but really try to throw your opponents off guard and react on where that pressure is coming from and react on the other way quickly, there's probably a chance there to salvage those rounds on the attack that probably Potter is talking about now. Well, we got to see FlyQuest composure on that first map. We'll have to see if Catface can find theirs now with their back up against the wall. This is an elimination match, and this is them fighting now for their chance to try and take it to game three, to try and be that team that makes it to the main event. But FlyQuest, they've been on a tear. Let's see if they can do it here. It's time to head into our agent select and our map number two. All right. Thank you, Sierra. Venter Venter back here for the second map between <laughs> FlyQuest and Catface, big shout out to those tweeting us as well uh, on these super cool taglines that they've had here. So, Potter, we're looking at this right now. Looks like it's going to be very, very basic at this point. Basic to the point where uh, it's just comfortable picks right now for both FlyQuest and Catface. Yeah, yeah, comfort picks indeed. I still, I think I kind of like Pot Silly more, but Vanter Banter is yeah, pretty darn Pot good too. Good. Yeah, yeah, they're all good. They're all good, for <laughs> sure. And I think uh, if you're FlyQuest, you're feeling like it's all good as well. Mirror comps, like you mentioned, I like I like the fact that we're going to see um, both player, both teams understanding how they want to react. We saw it on Bind. A lot of comfort, comfortness coming yeah. into map two here for both squads. Oh, yeah, for sure. And now you're looking at this matchup as well, where we've seen what, you know, Emily could do on this raise, but... Catface has to be ready to know what Dodonut could also do on this raise as well. So you're having a lot in terms of like heavy firepower with this agent for a team like FlyQuest. And we're hoping to see that Catface could be ready for this. This this head-to-head -head matchup, either it's Dodonut versus Supercat or Emily and Supercat as that raise, I'm still going to have to give that edge over here to FlyQuest. So how do you stop this type of aggression and these great satchels that usually come out here from Dodonut on this map? How do you shut them down? We'll see how they shut them down right here. Um, we talked about it. Catface, they need a hot start. They need this pistol. And a slow start to start things off. No, As no, I say no. that, though, oh. Julia faces I alone. Love it. No, you too. Yeah. Donut ran straight forward and ate that flash. And then didn't want to throw the paint shells just to think, hey, maybe the race is playing somewhere else. And she runs into three players right there after the flash. But it gets uh -oh. answered right back towards Long C. That rotating door that we mentioned before, the B to the C link. An opportunity now to just explode towards the C site and force in FlyQuest to play the retake. I'm asking for a refund on that frenzy if I'm Emily <laughs> there. But <laughs> unlucky, 4v4. Eve is going to be able to get the spike down. All defenders are pretty much here. You'll see that the KJ is a late lurk towards Waterfall. And I like this move from the attackers. They're pushing into Ooh. spawn. Still two for one, one there on that push towards spawn in favor of the attackers. Make that M. Lou on a two versus one. Identifying both players towards the back of the spawn on the high low, on the ramp, and on the ground. Enemy there it comes with the first shot. Nice shot. And actually, the reposition was a little bit off in the end. The timing was even better for M. Luo. Tapping onto the spike, trying to get it towards the halfway. There's the paint shells, at least to get her off, but she got the, the fuse at halfway. Has a turret on top of that and can rehide. Now take it through with the turret, gets the headshot. And it'll be the Red Bull clutch for M. Luo to put FlyQuest on the pistol round. 
What a clutch. So clever to really maximize and utilize everything you have in your back pocket. Bust out the turret right in the nick of time. And, you know, we talked about this post plant being so strong because they decided to take the fight in spawn. Yeah. And it was so decisive, but my God. Just, uh... <laughs> Emluo being a hero there and Han once again stepping up. Yeah, Emluo probably the last map was like, hey, how come the casters didn't talk to me uh, about me at all? Because everything was about <laughs> Emily and Dodo Nut. So let me try to do something here and pulls out that rebel clutch. This time around though, uh, a same attack. Way aggressive this time with five players on the attack. And it's working in favor of Catface. This is Bind all over again. This time in favor of Catface. Open A site. Yeah, aggressive, aggressive. They've made the read. Julia will get the spike down. Now, Dodo Nut's going to try to break that vent down and create some sort of misinformation, hopefully. But regroup here with Athena. They've got to be able to recover this round here, Vans. They're going for it. They have to. Yeah. And Respect was there to watch the spawn before because of what Catface did in the pistol round. Now, silently getting down the rappel. Tap on the spike. Luna Fox moving forward. With Super Cat, this half hasn't been done yet. He probably does so. Oh. oh, what a nice play coming through. Donut swinging out. It's halfway. The double swing back towards the tree side. As it's a two versus one. Luna Fox only wow. has 33 HP. Paint shells right at her feet. And now it's being full stuck. What a retake coming out. <gasps> oh, it was so close. But no cigar there as a retake comes back in favor of FlyQuest. <laughs> wow. The. I'm speechless. Same. I'm speechless, fans. Same. They, I can't believe, I mean, the timing of Dodo Nut being able to bank that paint shell right off that edge to just give her some space to be able to let Athena just stick to half was yeah. everything. I mean, unlucky for Catface as well. You saw Luna Fox running forward to throw that paranoia exactly. on the tap. You saw that the, the wheels were in motion for Catface, but once again, FlyQuest just quicker to the trigger there. Yeah. Wish you had more time to talk about that because it seemed like it was perfect. Picture perfect for Catface to win that post play, but fortunately with the nicer play by FlyQuest with the aggression, it was their round to win. This time around, Meow and the rest of Catface are moving into the C site. FlyQuest are comfortable with playing a retake. Yeah, these post plants though, these post plants on the attack side have been the crux for Catface all game long. But Eve takes the fight deep into Waterfall here. Great trade from Luna Fox as well. They want to answer right back. Not allowing FlyQuest to get anything out of the bonus round. A little bit of a problem with the ping pong right after, but Super Cat is right there to trade off their teammates. Nice little shot coming through, but in the end, Catface, picture perfect in protocol, swings and trades to allow for them to get their gun round. Yeah, and that's exactly what Super Catface needed here. Uh, I mean, just early on in the half, right? Stop the bleeding, have a decisive win. And you saw, I mean, that round, Super Cat, I don't think they let go of W key a single time in this round, right? As soon as that mount control was given, Super Cat was in that C site. So good decisive play, at least coming out. But it was a really, really crappy buy for FlyQuest. So this will be the true test here for this attack side for both teams. Yeah. And I like the pivot of what we were talking before from what we've seen from this previous series to now. They've been really quick as soon as they came into contact and really got into the place. And this time around, it's FlyQuest trying to do the opposite. Look at that revolving door opening things on a trap play on C. Three players falling down now for Catface. I can't believe Athena got that second. That spray transfer with the Vandal was beautiful. Uh, you saw Emily really wanted to get involved, but as soon as she realized they were up 3v2, she bails out. This is going to give a little bit of space at least for Meow to at least get the spike down. I hope Super Cat goes sniffing a little bit deeper before they make the sound cue. And that's exactly what they do. I've been trying to push more towards the spawn. Might be in around the world type of strat, but look at that sixth sense from M. Luo. Watching that line of sight all the way from A. Yeah, so ready. So ready. And they've got a hunting party and Dodo Nut and Emily left. as well to just kind of re-clear. Oh, this timing is is gonna be it's this is gonna be insane. Yeah. At least it's information right now for us. 
Supercat that the push is actually coming from the flank and maybe they're oh, still wow. the spawn. And with standing. that, unfortunately, loses that fight to M. Lua. Julia now could now focus on this 1v1 towards the spawn and then focus on a two player retake in front of C. Wow. Dude, M. Wow. Lua. What a tap. Beast. I mean, and you highlighted it, right? Just, just the fundamentals, the awareness to realize, again, weak side map. She knows that both of her teammates are hunting. They're regressing. They're getting info. Process of elimination. They knew that they weren't going to be front B. They knew they weren't A site. So M. Lua just kind of takes a step back. And after a beautiful shot to take out Supercat, she's still aware to just bide her time. Again, textbook fundamentals for fly quests make them look so clean in these rounds bands yeah man very well done so far on the drills that they've been doing with kamikaze as their coach and on a guardian buy that you have from luna fox that is very strong with this weapon they're looking to aggressive early towards the a site even a tp across to try to avoid any early names on the defender side and for the defenders speaking of them three players looking to trap in front of this b main Pretty aggressive here. A lot of ground taken. Viper all alone. Athena bailing out. Doesn't want anything to do with this. A lot of splash damage, but she's got to wait for teammates. Yeah. Fortunately, can get any tags with the vulnerability through the smoke end of Molly that, was, that she threw on the ground. So that allows here Supercat to really get in a position with the rest of their teammates in this pulse plant. On force to use out Seekers. One spotted are just around the corner, counting all those bullets. You can swing up for the skill. The Luna Fox is there for the save. Showstopper out of the defense. Dodona trying to clear out the site and misses. A Rosal a spray towards the back of the site, but it's the pistols then. Everything was missing. The wall were so close, but it turns to be a thrifty for Catface to get the second round of Lotus. And that's incredible. That, I mean, for Catface at least, salt to the wound. FlyQuest, they had to invest two ultimates to get back into things or what they thought it was as a thrifty dodo not wasting han wasting seekers as well that is just not what you want to see especially after having such clean rounds and again these anti-ecos vans they just it's dangerous yep. it's dangerous out here here comes three sheriff kills at long a christine and then we'll just talk about another thrifty okay right? okay you're calling it <laughs> Well, maybe it's going to take some time, though. After that poison rope, we got thrown up by Julia. They're falling back with the rest of the teammates up towards the C push. I wonder if Athena would be willing to... No, it doesn't seem like she wants to waste the Viper's Pit here. It would have been incredible if she had, like, a Spectre yeah. and reacted or something, but just has a KJ Molly and a turret to work with. That Molly slows things down. There's a big flank coming, but that, that alarm bot, the timing on this round is going to be crazy, man. Yep. There's that alarm bot, so we know the flank's coming through. And a util to use, nothing yet. But the Classics, once again, gets at least the first and second kill from a Sheriff of Dodo Nut. Supercat oh playing the off angle, finally stops the bleeding for a bit. Can it be enough? The swing coming out from Dodo Nut. Nope. Two versus one. 38 seconds left on the clock. Do we rip it out? The headshot then. Oh, 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 swing it back towards the water, but Ev was there with the off angle. And that is no thrifty to answer back. <laughs> one player remaining alive, just <laughs> one, but they got plenty of money and five ultimates on the board. Man, things got really, really dicey there, but good on them to equalize. And you know, we mentioned that alarm bot being on the flank instead of the turret. You just, you don't get that heads up that you would with the turret. So again, that swarm factor, that pounce factor on these anti-ecos, they get so damn dangerous. So at least they recover. Emily just trying to throw a little bit of misdirection with that TP noise. And that's an immediate omen hole. She's going to stick this. Oh my God. Just got canceled that is terrifying. At least now with the Seekers and that omen ult. That the players on the defenders are actually playing a little bit more further back inside the site. And feeling that presence, we already have a lockdown down for M. Luo to pivot now. You the attackers run. up towards the B site. Yeah, but look at all this utility coming out from Dodo Nut. Gonna be able to delay. As I say that though, she wastes the paint shells, so oof. 
Yeah, that's beast site gone. Oh yeah. And Athena's still stuck in her own Viper's Pit, so when that comes down or the door opens, that's gonna be an easy info gathering play here for Catface on the post plant. Showstopper available for the attack. Super wow. Cat doesn't need it yet. They play the clear up towards the spawn. He's quiet for a bit. Trailblazer to get the information on the first two players. A flash and maybe a self peek. Jibble across. That gets caught. No kills yet on either end. Meanwhile, though, we are pushing towards the spawn. Supercat still wins that duel. Ah, now on low HP, being forced and pushed away. This judge is look just looking for the exits. There's one. And we're running away. <laughs> I'm not running into a judge. <laughs> I'm not running into a judge. Saving their economy, securing the round. Cafe still takes the lead, and Christine, you mentioned you wanted to salvage a couple of rounds on Lotus like they did the last time against Misfits. They only got two the last time, this time already got four. Yeah, yeah, and that bolds really well going into the second half, but one round at a time, FlyQuest, I gotta say, that that round, that timing that um, Supercat was able to get, it, it just threw everything off, off guard. I, I, this timeout coming out for FlyQuest is coming right in the nick of time. Just get a breather. I think um, the way FlyQuest have been playing, it, it's been optimal. It's been optimal, but again, ever since that eco, or rather anti-eco, things have gotten a little bit hectic. But yeah. with this breather, I think um, things should get back down to normal, at least for FlyQuest. Yeah. Especially when it comes down to like these full classics that you currently have here for FlyQuest. The layout of the map of Lotus is so much different than what Bind was. Bind, only two sites. Obvious positions where you could rotate from and really flood back into the site. This time around, you just have to be on point, at least within the sites, to win those classic duels head-to-head -head on your Ecos. It almost worked out. I mean, it came down to a 1v1 for FlyQuest to try to answer back. And now a timeout. To let them know for Kamikaze, Coach Kamikaze, to let FlyQuest know that they are a team that could make it very easily to the main event. This is how you show it right now. Off this timeout, off these shares that you have, just try to answer right back. Yeah, all five members of Catface are heavily grouped towards C here. They don't want to take any chances in this anti-eco. I just love that we're holding nades every time here. Just trying to keep it for these retakes for Dodo Nut. Yeah, you don't love need to that. It early, just save it for the retakes. Until they dump on the sea site. Super Cat satcheling in. And Luo to lens the first sheriff onto Luna Fox, so that smoke's gone. Now a flash! Oh a judge from Athena! Oh take onto the third Super Cat's low on HP. Wall banks coming through, low HP or Ev. Trying to get that heal up potentially here for Supercat until M. Luo now moves down. Not allowing the heal to happen! And a nice little jiggle to jiggle. A kill coming through and finally the heal comes back up. Room to breathe, showstopper available. And it's oh off boy. the contact of the, of the boom bot. One thought that Han was going to land that shot, but Emily Spike does at least. Utility for utility and the jiggle for the jiggle. So many things going back and forth here, Vans. It's come down to a 1v1. Emily a little bit healthier, but the weaponry is in the advantage of Supercat. Fool sticking it. Long hair, don't care. They get the spike down. And Emily's just inching forward. Oh, she chooses the wrong right angle. Supercat saves it at least with the ace. If it wasn't for Supercat, Christine, oh my god. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, oh boy. This is gonna be a and story. I like. I like the care. I like the loosey goosey style, right? We talked about that. That's what we need to see from from Catface, and that's what they're showing here, yeah. right? I, I mean, things got dicey, but when you're decisive and you decide to commit, everyone needs to commit. So things can look really hectic and really ugly sometimes, yeah, yeah, but that's yeah. just Valorant, right? Yeah. I, but again, I like the fact that they were all committed together. This is where FlyQuest. They should be able to kind of slow things down. They should be able to bring things upright for themselves again here in this round. Not a lot of big ults on the board for Meow. And Dodo Nut still working with hers. Oh, oh that was so close. Oh yeah, on either end. And that's at least some information for both teams. Now forcing the door to open up, but this is just a way to position. This is 
just to keep FlyQuest thinking and potentially over-rotating. And the only rotation comes out from Han to try to pull the dog out to get information towards B-Main. They'll contact onto the raids at least. b ADSing down towards the C-Long. Played this position quite often, so that was probably red here by Catface oh. to try to win that duel fight. And speaking of duels, it's Donut winning that B-side hold. High low Cross here. Fire. Perfect for Athena for two Spike kills. Down. Trailblazer only stuns for a bit. Ev is there to support. <laughs> Showstopper enemy. coming out. I mean, Dodonut just comes flying by. You're on a 4v1 for Luna Fox. That's what we like to call a high five play on EG. <laughs> I termed that. I termed that, Vans. Oh, yeah? So what, what's, the, what's the definition here? Just flying by Showstopper and just like chest bump? Yeah, you know, you just, you bait and swish, you run past your teammate who's in a fight, give him a little high five, and you're in there. You're in there. <laughs> it's my turn now. Let me in. You know, I love that attitude coming out from Dodo Nut, and that's exactly what they needed. Uh, last round, you know, things got dicey, but after that pause again, this is what we expected. FlyQuest to kind of slow things back down and fight on their own terms. Catface, they're going back towards A here, Vince. Yeah. The last three rounds was towards C-Mount, but, but the problem with this is it's a little bit telegraphed. You can see FlyQuest, they're going straight towards this A fight as well. But with the amount of times that we're holding pain shells for Dodo Nut, will they come out on time? And maybe instead of throwing towards the entrance, it's towards Rubble to try to pressure that area. So let's see. Flash is coming out. There's the first TP. <laughs> Assembly gets to swing onto Luna Fox. Paranoia, Paranoia to blind a few. And a swing back out. Vernita oh. wins that fight close range, though. Two players stuck in front of the Toxic Screen, in front of the Viper Wall, by the Baby Door, and Pain Shells pushes them back. As we have an early 4v4, and both Omens are down. Vernita reacted so well there. Full blind, full paranoia, but W keys forward. Understanding that's her only win con there. Is able to trade it out, and now... Now at least they're able to get that A site for, for, for free. Oh. As I say that though, re-aggress down here towards stairs. Just walking down for that kill. And Han just waiting behind the boxes. The cat base can't really afford to fall back. So that's how they take the pressure back in the A site. A walk in by Super Cat. They drops. They drop Han, sorry. So the plant comes down. Oh, All the timing, timing of the wall. Well done by Julia. The wall bank kill after onto Dodo Nut. And the advantage now comes back. The lurk out from Julia. The timing onto this one though for standing. Mluo to get that first kill. <laughs> but the support still comes across here for Julia. Athena stuck in a two versus one. The veteran of the roster for FlyQuest. Forest 2 makes so much noise here just to try to get into a better position. A nice little first oh, wow. headshot onto Julia. Pumps up the orb. But doesn't know where the second opponent's at. Swinging behind the site, clearing out towards the tree. Not there. Oh, she thinks it's towards B main, but it's just behind the wall. Bernita moves across the box in an easy kill in the end, but that was a nice try. It was indeed a nice try. Unlucky for Athena as well. Had the wrong read and ended up coming on a very late rotate. Arrived too late to be able to help the teammates as well, so... That retake looking a little bit sloppy for FlyQuest. And especially considering the opening as well. Yeah. But my god, that wall going down with that timing as well. It's so unlucky for Han. Oh yeah, that is that is all superstar play by Julia. With how she played around her utility there on that whole plant. And now early ult coming oh. on the seaside and once again trying to contest. There's the paint shells coming through but only does body damage there on the super cat as Emily has fallen. So it's one of those moments here, Christine, where it's almost like, hey, we've learned what they were doing the last time around. Let's Tom Cruise it again, Edge of Tomorrow. We know train. where the TP's coming through. Kill Emily in the second one there on the high. Oh, wait, not yet. Guardian for two kills. Now it's a two versus two. Spike not inside the A site yet. It's actually pinned towards Rubble. So an opportunity there to get into position. Athena sees the Vandal in her, in her POV, but doesn't want to peek out just yet, knowing that the opponents are close. Yeah, depending on how long Vernina keeps this turret up, if Coming the back. spike ends up going towards C, they should be able to throw some misdirection. But as I say that, she's gone ahead and just recalled that turret. We'll see if the defenders read this or react in any way, but Alarmbot's still up at front yeah. B here. 
Some indecisiveness coming through. Ooh. Retracing their steps back towards left. A here. Yeah, and, and that turret, turret at yeah. stairs, yeah. It's gonna be everything. But the opportunity now for cat face is that they still have to mm. face against a judge long range. That's the disadvantage that FlyQuest currently has. Cat face opening the door to run into the site, so that's gonna give an opportunity for Athena to pick up that vandal in the front. Mix it up now as all players left. of Catface are moving inside the A site. Eight seconds. Plant will be guaranteed at least, and they split the second player. Remaining. Snake bite trade off 1v1. Vernita now putting the nano swarm right onto the spike. Snake bite pushes her away. The ball in the viper, the swing out, but Vernita gets the kill in the end. Trade after trades as now the lead continues for Catface as they have seven on the board. Steady for Vernita. Steady as hell. And yeah, I mean, you could see that she's playing like with no pressure. I, I mean, that was a beautiful readjustment with that spray control. It wasn't even a spray control, it was just tap, tap, yeah. first, readjust, reposition. Beautiful, and especially considering, I mean, FlyQuest, it seemed like they had everything they needed to win this one. Especially with those shots coming out from Guardians and putting themselves in the last round of the half once again with two Guardians, once again with another Judge. And once again, Catface moving towards the A-side. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, don't fix it. They've had control of Rubble the whole time. Now this crossfire between Door, Baby Door as you say. Oh, but Dodona's already kind of letting them know she wants to fight. Yeah. Right under the wall coming through. Just even swings across the first one to Ev. Satchel to try to get away and escapes through the Hobbit door. Meanwhile, though, the TP did happen towards the back of the site. And Lunafox escapes with 20 HP remaining, evening up the tally, allowing for the attackers to move back into the A side and get the plat down. They do get it down indeed. That dog was able to clear all of backside, so this should give some comfort, some breathing room in this post. Lunafox just barely breathing though, but that'll help. Yep. Vernina. Yeah, finding one. So many players on the edge of ults that could turn this round over on the retake, but one of them has to be more aggressive, and that is definitely going to have to be FlyQuest. Flash inside the site, Lunafox in the middle, trying to support and assist her team. It's not even needed. Julia getting two kills Julia. once again. Being a pivotal moment here for the team. Long range with the Spectre oh. hit. Finally, as Han gets the kill, Lunafox sweeps in for the trade. And Catface takes the lead in the first half on the attack, 8-4. Julia's had enough. She's had enough, man. She just decided, you know what? I'm going to one tap my way out of this uh, first half. But yep. what a beautiful way to finish. I mean, they stayed strong. And, and especially after FlyQuest showed up a good fight, at least from the start. 100%. And it seems as though FlyQuest that looked so good here in the beginning of these rounds of that map on defense just had no answer with the relentless pressure that they were getting for the last three rounds here on this A side. And that will that be their weakness trying to work on the attack this time around? We'll soon have to find out. As the beginning of this second half, though, between FlyQuest and Catface, FlyQuest are looking to pressure into the C site to start things off. Yeah, and I don't want to jinx anything quite yet, but we are coming <laughs> over towards the strong side at least. And you can see that cat face, they're ready for a fight. Sky flash in hand, super cat with contact. Paint shells go out. Beautiful. Paranoia from wow. waterfall. Two kills for cat face. Trying to catch them off the rotate, tack into the spawn. Toxin screen down. And no kills answered back by FlyQuest. Athena should have a good idea that this utility is here. The sound cue is coming through. She can decide when she wants to break it, and that time is now. Mm -hmm. Toxins going up. What a shot. Spike Julia down. is heating See. up. And in a right moment as well, an opportunity for Catface to really get a strong lead in the second half and push this to a third Spike map and need it be a reminder. Winner of this moves on into the main event of the game changers loser is out of the tournament and already catface has done so by eliminating assigned or being misfits just prior to this so playing extra innings on a 13 11 victory and a couple of ot's on the second map they're playing more rounds now and still put up a good fight on their second map of the series on lotus against FlyQuest this time around 
Yeah, and I, I appreciate what FlyQuest tried to do on that pistol. You saw that Athena wanted to misdirect, let them think that some sort of A site plant was imminent, but they hit the C site a little too fast afterwards. So all that work that Athena did kind of was moot yeah. at that point. Yeah. But we know FlyQuest, they definitely want to go for these objective controls. They want this orb. Okay. And uh, I saw this match already. I the Meows, they know it. I thought I saw this round already, but maybe not the yeah. same type of kills. 2v2, so far so good for FlyQuest. And, oh yeah, I forgot. I, I should have taken more this, this round into account and more seriously, because it's also FlyQuest of Classics. So still winnable. <laughs> As a jump peek comes across, they spot Luna Fox, oh, force a TP. Oh no. The respect given right there, and no opportunity to just chase down for the kill to jump spot there. Once again, and nobody up the site for a plant. Dota, want, Dota wants more. That's huge information. Oh, they yeah. know that the spawn player's left, so immediately a double swing up the waterfall here. Oh. High low. Oh no. Oh, Han wasn't ready. Bulldog, Spectre picked up though by it, not Han. Holding it back at the double box. Will Luna Fox clear this? Oh. Gun sticking out! You picked up a wow. Spectre and you still got the kill with the classic! <laughs> a thrifty win there for FlyQuest! Wow, wow. I mean, I guess, you know what? Bait. Bait your teammate <laughs> there. Uh, I mean, the fact that uh, Lunafox probably won't clear that, I guess, is is, is a huge gamble. Yeah. But for sure, doing work in this thrifty. My goodness. Oh, 34 HP as well. It's insane. Yeah, you know, I think, Vans, we, we just can expect these second rounds. This is just, yeah, it is yeah, what yeah. it is. You know, usually, it is like, what it is. In, in like, Shoutcast 101, uh, anti-eco, eco garbage round, you could talk about storylines and hero building. No, 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 no. Just focus on fly quest with classics, they could still win rounds. <laughs> Julia's got 10 HP and falling back already. Oof. Well, your best friend in Sky is gonna let you not feel the pain anymore. <laughs> You got a boo boo? <laughs> Let me take care of that. I got you. And it's okay, good so actually. Right? They have they have sheriffs that they work sheriffs rather that are working with this round uh, over in round number fifteen. Yeah, yeah, and I like that they were going for a quick play towards B. Unfortunately, none of the fly quests are going towards that front B. But those are the kinds of set pieces that you'll need deeper into this half. So curious to see how many more we'll see coming out. The rotations are coming through. I mean, Julia's not here yet, but the fighters are here. Yeah. And Lua playing lineup for Pulse Plants as well. Has the alarm about to watch flank, has turret to watch towards the Hobbit lore. And as that Ooh. gets broken, it's a responsibility for Athena to watch it now, ADSing now. Yeah, the contain Inner going sites. here. Yeah, yeah. Do some damage, at least on the economy, would be kind of good. But now slowly inching and flooding in. Alarm bot now gets broken. First kill to for Emperor. Forced to throw a lineup before and misses it. It's okay though. Yeah, watches the flank. Two kills there and nobody saw anything. Flawless victory. Yeah, she was testing a new lineup. Yeah, yeah exactly, like. exactly. I mean, M. Lua looked pretty cool there. She had full faith that her teammate had her back. So she's just t testing her lineup. You, you got to practice because yeah. under pressure, you still want to try to do the lineups. Usually you have all the time in the world to set it up because your teammates are already there. Now you want to practice this practice this while you're under the pressure because you have the you know you have the rounds to work with. You have a map under your belt, you know? Hundred P. Hundred P. So See, that's that's why I get the cast with the world chat. I can say whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Vans, this is it. Odin's on the board. I mean, this is this was yeah. great for Cap Face when we saw them play earlier on this map, but uh, FlyQuest, they're not gonna deal with it. Fast 100%. opening towards B. Seekers is going to give Dodo Nut all the information she wants. Yeah, even the Hobbit is going to drop broken, so this is a free site to take. And finally, we see the Odin come back and try to wall bang back towards the A link. That's what they were trying to do with the Odin earlier on, try to wall bang towards A main to pressure up towards that area, but it ends up being a, a, a wrong read. Allowing FlyQuest to set up on the pulse plant. Storming through, though, our cat face. Lady Bird from Athena wow. wins that 1v1 against Vernita. But F swings right out. From the top of B site. Flash to allow now the swing out from Super Cap. Beautiful. <laughs> Letting both players on the crossfire, but it's still a ping pong. Out from FlyQuest. Spike is now defused halfway. Odin oh. is through the smoke. And Lua gets the kill. And fully blinded Julie gets the last. <laughs> Snake bite on the ground, but it doesn't even matter. Meow. Cat face.
Yeah, that sounded really funny, actually. Yeah, you know, Cat Face coming back, <laughs> and they have 10 on the board. Feels so <laughs> <shot>. shut. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It was unintentional, but it just, it sounded pretty yeah. cool after I caught myself. You know, you, you gotta call yourself out sometimes. <laughs> this was a great retake uh, again, coming out here for Catface, and uh, it's good to see that they're able to be consistent. I was afraid that you know earlier when we were hyping them up about their defense, about their retake, that it might have just been a fluke. Maybe it was just team dependent. Stylistically, it worked out, but it looks like. At least cat face. Oh, Karumba. So good. It almost feels like when you're spamming with the Odin, it probably masks the TP that Emily out. just got across towards Rubble and surprise Super Cat. For sure. I, I mean, eh, that's oof. that's tough. Yeah. That's tough, and it seems like I'm jinxing these teams at this point. Yeah, but time to hype them up, we lose. Potter, well, welcome to welcome to the role of, of a caster. That's also yeah. part of the top description. It just yeah. the caster curse. Well, I'm doing a good job then. Yeah, a, a tremendous job. <laughs> With the lockdown now, trying to take cover of the A site. Look at Evan just staying towards that backside, trying to punish early, and that gives an opportunity for Dodona to move forward and take control behind the smoke. Platt then comes in. This could have been almost a 4v4 situation. Ooh, Viper's pick goes down. And, oh, that's a oh, huge stun! Huge Bernina. stun from the dog. Bites Athena at the lake, but Bernina couldn't get the kill. Athena comes back from the sun with the headshot of the Julia. Dodona watching it through close range. Odin misses the kill. One now by wow. FlyQuest. All across the board, a flawless again that maybe could, should have been that moment on that retake for Catface because they had all the opportunities to capitalize on some mispositioning there up in the Yeah, absolutely. And this all comes down to Athena there. She, she had yep. no business getting those kills fully stunned. Unlucky that uh, Catface don't pull the trigger there. Great utility coming out for Eve to kind of set up the motion for that retake, but unfortunate that some miscoms come through. FlyQuest looking great. Looking really good. And almost, oh man, Let, let's talk about it in a bit. Emily with two early kills now, a push out in front of Rubble, triple kill coming through on the eco of Catface. And now we have a chance to say it, or what at least I was trying to bring out here. FlyQuest are doing a lot of these A pressures, Potter, where it almost feels like, hey, you did that to us? We're not going to let that fly. We'll do the same. Oh, hi. I, I caught exactly. myself again. I did, I did that stop, joke. stop. But, <laughs> but yeah, we'll just do exactly the same thing to you, and it's it's working out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They just kind of flipped the script on them. But when you start to realize that you are the one in control of that rubble, you can do a lot on a map like Lotus, right? I mean, yeah. that rubble and that mound, it's just such these two points of the map are just high contestion, high traffic. So when you can really focus and control one of them, you can do whatever you want with the other as far as bluffing and misdirection. So it's good to see that they're feeling confident with that rubber control. I expect this round though, coming into it for some sort of an answer coming out yeah. here for cat face. This is a little bit more of the, uh, the standard now of the Lotus that, you know, we, we were painted that storyline on that first series between Misfits and Catface, where yeah, it's usually an attacker side of the map. Now we're really seeing it this time around with the amount of aggression to fight back against the utility team on the remaining. defensive side from both of these teams have been quite on point for the results on the attacker side, which is now you're trying to figure out, okay, will they try to keep running this again here for FlyQuest? How do we answer back? Do we want to turtle into the site? Do we want to try to add more util coming through? And looking at the comp that they currently have here, you're gonna need to pressure a little bit more and maybe it's one of those things here Potter that with the latest patch having the omen paranoia not be as quick as it used to be when you're running forward could that be one of those things that might be the off timing that doesn't allow these triple pushes to be as effective as it used to be yeah definitely could be definitely could be but at the same time too uh cap face they're they're doing well they're doing well yeah. with this um retake scenario i mean FlyQuest are able i would say they got lucky you know that athena round yeah. after getting 
prowlered on or dogged on she yeah, was able yeah, to yeah. get a triple kill so i think um after this timeout at least if you're if you're cap base again you have to reinforce that confidence you are on your strong side of this map and you've got three ultimates to work with coming into this one and with those three ultimates it's more of a passive play not as much pressure down towards that long a side turtling up is the killjoy setting up in that location and the sky and the rays for Catface are pressing more towards that seaside. Yeah, they really don't want to give up these this A site this time around. So much utility bombarded towards that direction. Looks like they're going to be okay with giving up this B site though. Right now, FlyQuest are just objective controlling, gathering those orbs, trying to get some map control at the same time yeah. with it, but they don't Ooh. really have the ultimates to be able to take the site. At least the Rays isn't in position yet, because Supercat, she's got the line of sight. Oh. Great shot. Only a dink, and through the mound doesn't do that much damage, unfortunately, to Dodo Nut, but that was an opportunity right there to punish. And seeing that Rays over there, the pivot goes all the way towards the A site, saying, oh, Probably the Seekers, or sorry, sorry, probably the Killjoy utility is towards the A side. Let's just brute force it now with our Showstopper on the attack. Yeah, but Athena lingering there and breaking all of those Seekers, staying around, that was huge. That yeah. delays the defenders, and now this spike, it should go down pretty free here, setting up for an easy post for Fly. Dodona gets the backstab kill, Showstopper to create space right at the ground. Long range, looking for the punish, it stays behind the boxes. Swinging out the double to help out. What a play there for FlyQuest. It was close and to the edge, but still in favor of the attacker on the post plant. Five versus three, A Super Cat is trying to rotate back with Luna Fox, wow. but Dodona still watching it here for the double box in the back of the site. Now another enemy has been spotted at the drop-off. It's EDV remaining. spamming across. It's a one-for-one. One. Last one spotted behind the double box, at least at the A main. And Ludafox has to try to win a 3v1, getting wall-banged left and right. Nothing you can really do here. <laughs> FlyQuest now with a pristine pulse plant. Pristine. Pristine indeed. And, 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 you know, that's the perfect adjective here because even throughout all of that, all that pressure towards that A in that post, they had an insurance plan. Athena was working on a late, late flank that entire time, setting it up. And it's good to see that Athena's finding those timings because earlier in this half, those timings were a little too late, especially on the rotate. So insurance plan coming through strong and a nice execute for FlyQuest here. Back to a scenario of a save and four players of cat face are just trying to use these sheriffs on a long range. One to spot, three to swing, three to swing off the contact, but FlyQuest is not looking to pressure that yet. Nice little Stead aim map session. Yeah, she's ADSing through and blocking the vision. Look at the amount of players running through that smoke. Hit by the decay. Flash now puts a in an off angle oh, position. Are they going to swing one per one? So far, it seems to be the case. Second flash, half blind. Trailblazer, dog, stunned. There's the push. Snake butt on the ground. Escapes. Meanwhile, oh. though, towards the C site, it's open. Yeah, good reaction at least with all that aggro that uh, Athena had towards uh, that A main. At least her teammates are able to get the spike down. Athena's still trying to survive. They're on the hunt. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Athena's welcoming this though. She wants these frags. Oh, she'll get him. She'll get him. And almost halfway <laughs> towards the Viper's Pit. FlyQuest is able, was able now, or is able now rather, to tie the game 10 to 10. So that was nice. I like how you were mentioning Athena just continue to backpedal, keeping the crosshair placement going through, just practicing her repositioning, and it works out for isolating all of these kills. Yeah, yeah, definitely confidence plays coming through. And again, as I mentioned, her teammates reacted well towards that C. So the communication is coming through strong, and that's exactly what they'll need to make sure that cat face don't do what they do on the defense of this map. Super Cat's got the showstopper in play, and this is going to be good information, good control for Luna Fox. So we should see a rotate coming out here for Super Cat, but Ooh. she decides to stay. Yeah, and Honda wants to, and the rest of the team wants to fight inside this pit behind the Seekers. There's a stay by oh, wow. getting through, going behind! What a flash! What a flood into the pit! That was definitely practice. So drilled, so drilled, and as you say, practice. Emily was also procking that Omen ult, 
behind. So there was like a three-way crossfire all at once. Dodo Nut has so much control. Beautiful crosshair placement. And the dog should get even more. Beautiful crosshair placement from the whole team of FlyQuest on the Pulse Plant on top of that. Now, there is the discipline. You have numbers advantage, fall back into sight, play the Pulse Plant to your numbers. Flash for info, and they ping it out, they smoke it out. They're pretty much guaranteed this round. Tucking tail, falling back. That sound cue should come through, and you can see right away Athena reacting. She does not want to let these two save. Walking and biding her time. She should hear these two players running soon. Here's a jump on the top of heaven. These kills are going to be huge, man. Oh, if, yeah. if Athena's able to get these... And look at the players, they just have their knives out. So that's a free kill. Coleman. Get him. And the last one. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> FlyQuest in the lead. Money is broken pretty much now for Catface. And that's why you need this second timeout. The last one that they have here on this second map. Potentially face elimination. But look at this practice play. That was just so nice on how they... Just really got around. It, it really comes down to also mechanical skills that you need from a complete roster because not everybody is able to do those satchels. It looks kind of easy, but it's not that easy to do that double satchel to land where you want to land. And Dodo has been on point with these throughout the whole Game Changers. Yeah, yeah. And it's, as you say, just super drilled. <laughs> super drilled. Easier said than done, for sure, with the satchels. <laughs> but man, uh, what a way, what a way to just solidify that round. And again, I got to mention Athena's lurks because I feel like in this timeout, uh, Catface are probably talking about it, talking about the fact that every time they turn around, there's a Viper flanking them. And earlier on in this half, you know, they were able to punish Athena multiple times throughout it. But towards the end here, at least in these last few rounds, Athena's constantly finding herself in the back lines and just wreaking havoc. So... Right now, you know, if you're cat face, you just got to collect yourselves here and talk about how you want to handle this Viper. Even, even once again, how do you stop the pressure? How do you read the early 10 seconds of the round? Is it going to be an early hit towards the A side or C side? Yeah. And continuing the protocols of adding that pressure at the beginning of the round. With Supercat looking to nade out with the flash. And that contains for a bit, and look at that instant rotate. Love They're that. Playing the mind games. Yeah, and that's something that was missing a little bit earlier. So this extra mobility coming out from the defenders, that's something that's just kind of evolved over the course of these last one and a half Lotus maps for Catface. Love that. Love the mobility. This does keep Vernina in a bit of an island but it's okay they've got the kj ult they've got the showstopper right now meow they're okay with giving up this a site most definitely and try to keep alive is probably that pivotal point of this round and instantly as the wall comes up we put lock down down <laughs> Dodo Nut. Dodo Nut's just running in <laughs> using the showstopper to stop the lockdown but that said, we still have the Defender's Showstopper from Supercat. And already, Catface is set up. Travel is there first. Boombuck moving forward. There's the Showstopper. <gasps> Stepping on to the Molly. Julia gets the kill on the Dodo Nut. Emily's right there! Swinging on to the second kill of the EVV. And not enough time to reload to get the third on the Julia. An opportunity to still retake the site right now for Catface. And Luo, 1v1 against Ludafox with the off angle. Two players playing on the post plan, super far away. Lineups are being held and are being thrown. Now to stick up to the spike. The lineup on the oh first, no. running out of bullets. Fernandez trying to oh stick it, and Athena finally gets the kill with the wall bang and the sheriff to put FlyQuest at map and series point. Oh, wow. And, and you saw the struggle. That choice that Dodonut had to make on that entry. Do I use the showstopper for the ball? <laughs> Can I use it to my left on spawn and shoot this one out? Uh, that was a tough choice to make. But my God, did she free up and open up the site for her squad? That's, that's exactly, it. yeah, that, that's what you needed. I mean, that, oh, yeah. that's beautiful. I was like the meme of like the captain in the spaceship trying to hit which, which red button. Yeah, which one do I do? <laughs> <laughs> it's just sweating bullets as she's trying to decide. Nonetheless, though, potentially one of the final buys coming out from cat face. Jeez. Low satchel, Donut swinging Trade? head first against Renina. No trades. 
So big advantage for Catface to start off the round. Yeah, but the post plant at least for FlyQuest. Hopefully Dodo Nut's death doesn't go in vain. Molly's down on the spike and these crossfires, these crossfires from FlyQuest have been so strong all series long. Emily's alone right now. Oh, and it's a double flash to retake to start things off. Smoke on the spike to try to get the tap, forcing out the first Molly out. All players are inside the C site, as for FlyQuest, all outside. There's that first kill coming through, and it's gonna be the most tap best. Sick on the spike, and Luo! Four kills! Athena with the last! And with that, the side objective is completed! FlyQuest is going to the main event of the North American Game Changers! Wow, and what a way to end it as well. You saw Athena on the bottom left side of the map, and I thought, man, what kind of lineup is she doing? Is it going to show up in time? And it absolutely does. Just spreads at the feet and allows the spray down to come through strong. Uh, what a way to end it. You know, we were talking about the fact that, you know, we would see uh, Catface be the ones to, to have to come back in the second, but it was FlyQuest, really. Yeah. Uh, but man, we saw a dominant opening and we're seeing a lot of different sides come out here for FlyQuest. 100% and you know what immediately let's just bring Sierra back here on the desk with us because that was an intensive way to finish off that series with a spam fest through the smoke. It almost feels like it was Catface getting the receiving end of what they did on Lotus against Misfit when it was a spam fest in there on that seaside. Mm -hmm. I blinked and the game is over in FlyQuest <laughs> Red or in the main event of Valor Game 2. I don't know. What a performance there, though. Especially, too, with kind of a dicey mid-section of that map there. I was kind of curious if maybe Catface could do it, but FlyQuest, they managed to bring it back. And, I mean, honestly, after that, Potter, like, I... I forget anything negative that happened. It was just it was just good stuff all around. <laughs> good stuff all around for sure. Uh, hero plays as well, and it's good to see that it was Athena in one of these highlight reels. That round yeah. was so pivotal. The fact that she again got that triple kill within her own ult and Dodo Nut just consistent as ever. Every time you see this player, she's so fearless, consistently getting multi kills, finding those openings, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, it got dicey on Lotus, but, but uh, FlyQuest, you can see that they've done a lot of prep coming into this oh, event. Yeah. But even when we're looking at how the map really came out here on Lotus for Catface, they did a really good job. Like, every single one of these fights, when I'm trying to look here, it's mostly been face-to-face, -face, so they understood where the position was going to be from FlyQuest, where they're going to try to uh, get control on that A-side rubble first and really bring that fight to them. But again, it, it just came up to the point where you have players that just didn't really want to bring this to a third map over on one side. And one team, we mentioned it before at the beginning of the game, there's a potential here that one team wants it more while the other team has, has nothing to lose. And which one is going to tip that scale? And it was definitely FlyQuest now really wanting to prove a point, really wanted to make it into the main event. And seeing that Coach Kamikaze joining this roster is going to make a difference so they can make it to Brazil. Being able to see the team and just that next level that they've managed to step into in such a short amount of time has been absolutely amazing. I mean, from falling just short in Valorant Game Changers 2 fodder to now being able to make it to the main event and looking quite strong. I feel like every game, there's already such strong players, but we get to see more of the cohesion, more of that team play going on. It makes me really excited to see them moving on forward. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you can just kind of have a breath of sigh of relief now, right? If you're FlyQuest, like you've qualified now, uh, the pressure, it's still on. Listen, you want to get first place, but <laughs> at least your prep going into next week is going to be a little bit different. That pressure is going to feel a little bit different and you're going to feel really damn good about qualifying. So a lot of confidence going to build up for the next couple of days. And so, yeah, it, it's going to be really important to see uh, how this team evolves uh, over the next few days. I mean, making it to the main events, just the next step. Excited to see how far they're going to go in general. We're going to be able to have a chance to talk to Athena right up. But first, the Prime Gaming post-match hi post highlights. So don't go anywhere.
Warriors win. with that 2-0 fly quest they've made their way into the main event here at valorant game changers and to talk now in our verizon post-match interview i have athena on the line hopefully the rest of the team too normally everybody likes to get in on that camera as well of There's course to celebrate there they are hello <laughs> everyone you're in the main event how's it feeling it feels really good it feels like we're back where we belong and the job's not done so really good it's definitely really exciting to see especially too how does this moment feel after we've gotten to see how strong the team is but it was a goal that was fell just a little bit short of in game changers too and you finally overcame that hurdle after getting knocked down to the slower bracket yeah i think as a team we struggled a little bit we had a little bit of uh like smaller issues that we were struggling to figure out, but we ended up nailing those things this boot camp. I feel like this boot camp has been super productive for us just as a team. Um, and so kind of grinding it out and having a coach that helps us get there has been amazing. And obviously FlyQuest support has been really, really great for us. We've gotten to see too the hard work that's being put in because Coach Gami was tweeting out last night after that loss to DSG about all of you right away putting in that work. So what was that biggest thing to turn around that that biggest lesson that you learned going into today's match that go forward and for Wednesday as well? I think the biggest, <laughs> I think the biggest, sorry, I, there's something tickling my neck. I wonder what it is. Now there's, I think the <laughs> biggest thing that we got was that yesterday we really just didn't play like ourselves. And I think we kind of nipped it in the bud where we saw like all of our issues. We saw where like our miscoms were happening and where we really weren't shining as a team. And Coach Cammy like really helped us point that out. He put in the work, got all the links for us to like watch the VOD. And as a team, we took all that in and just applied everything that we know. And then during the match today, during Lotus, there seemed to be a, a time mid-match where Catface was starting to start string together some rounds it looked like maybe they could make one of those comebacks and then you guys ended up nipping that in the butt what was that adjustment then mid-game to make sure you could just get this into and qualify um i think we knew that like every every person on the team is really talented on both sides so that's not something that we were worried about we expect someone to like pop off that's completely normal and i think with the talent in gc like that is something that we expect but we just knew that if we stuck to the way that we play and we stuck to our roots and like ultimately like teamwork kind of made their dream work oh power of friendship you know how it is like that really just helped us work it out so 
Uh, we just knew if we just kept it what we knew was good and not kept our strengths that we would win. I can see in the background too, everyone poking each other. It's definitely the power of friendship. Seems like a little family over there. I'll let you go and celebrate, but real quick before I do, do you have any final words or anything you want the fans to remember go for about FlyQuest going into main event next week? Uh, I think we're definitely on our way to playing the best that we can play. I think today just showed a fraction of the potential that we have and we're ready to grind it out, make sure that we play the best. So thank you to all the fans here at FlyQuest. We love all of you. We appreciate all the support and we're ready to kind of show everything that we got and we're ready to destroy competition. It's all good. And we're so ready to see it. Congratulations <laughs> once again. Good night, everyone. Oh, laughs over there. Always love chatting with the gals over at FlyQuest. But to end off our day, well, why not let's bring back two other awesome people as well. Bring Potter and Vans back to the desk. Oh, you said Vans. I'm part of the so awesome? Slow. What the Dude, I thought, was part of the, I, I thought I wasn't part of the awesome, so I was just trying to step away. But thank you. Thank you for including me. <laughs> you're, you're Canadian. How can you not be? Let's let's be real there. But uh, mm. and Flag was so good to see all the smiles and stuff over there. I mean, Potter, they've been working really hard. They got that power of friendship on their side. I'm excited to see how far they're going to make so it we, in the right? main event. Yeah. They like this. Wait. There you go. Yeah, Where for sure. For, Sierra, for, Sierra's trying what to dodge, hell? dip, dodge, yeah, bomb, on. weave. What, what, what am I know. supposed to do? <laughs> 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 yeah. No, for sure. I, I mean, wholesome, wholesome indeed. And, and you know, the amount of hours and the amount of time that you have to spend together uh, in order to be a successful team, you need a little bit something extra sometimes uh, to get through those stressful times. So definitely seeing like that wholesome aspect, definitely it's a buff. It's definitely a yeah. buff. Yeah, with, with that type of friendship or camaraderie or seeing how they're really happy at the end of these games it almost feels like in these moments when you're trailing behind by so much it's not a team that's just going to be you know crumbling under the pressure and they're going to be able to lift each other up to make sure that they stay on point i mean again to to relieve back to the feature with emily and athena as we mentioned at the beginning of the show if one player is able to step up the way that they do the other ones are going to be like hey we ha we can't let we can't hop into one person's backpack we all have to have our own same size backpack and then we just do a a, a full line into the victory line not even a backpack they have they have a wagon and they're all taking turns pretty much so. pretty much <laughs> It's, it's like a flying V. You know when ducks are like the... the oh, no, I, I'm not being too... I, I, I'm like... <laughs> we're, we're going yeah, too I don't, I don't far. Want, we're going to too Adam far on for this. Here. Let's just have a pre a post-game uh, show here. <laughs> All right. This is where we're going to put a hard stop to our duck conversation. I'm talking about something that's actually awesome out here, which is our aim lab flick of the day. All right. So a little drum roll on this one because there is... We got some high skill players out here. This could be anybody, but yeah, Vans, it's gonna be Dodonut. Yeah, and, and that was one of many on this very map of Vine here for Dodonut. Not only, again, with this weapon, with this ability right here, but with her op on that first map of Vine has been pristine, and that's just a great way to react. The Sixth Sense, you mentioned it. I remember during the cast routine, it's like, Dodonut already knew that. Turn around to get that kill onto market, back into Sands, boom, another headshot. Yeah, yeah, I, and that's exactly what you want at your duelist, right? Being able to visualize for yourself where you're going to be able to make your own movie every single time. So, uh, yeah, Dodo Nut, you could see the confidence beaming, and, and that's exactly what you want to see uh, moving forward into deeper into the tournament. I'll have to see how many more aim lab flick of the days that Dodo Nut can rack up before the end of this entire <laughs> thing. But there's going to be stiff competition ahead. So we have majority of the teams that have qualified into the main event here. Just super exciting stuff. I mean, there's already the four teams that we talked about at the beginning of day having stamped their ticket on the F and on the right to actually we got them all now this is exciting stuff it's going to be evil geniuses not surprised about that but also newt newt and wing fan control joining the squad here vans and even if the names aren't the most familiar to the viewers the players on the team definitely are oh 100 percent. and i want to keep my eyes on how newt newt's going to do in the top eight because again watching how they played against version one they look like a team that really understood the map rotations to play against the top dogs of the game changers so i want to keep an eye on this type of team to see if they could actually go deeper into uh, this top eight and 
unfortunately just break some dreams of some other teams that are trying to make it through but everybody is currently playing for that second place right now that a version one's already made it through so or you win it all or you win it through points you got to be at least that second place definitely going to be a tough ride for a lot of those teams except for version one who's already got their ticket i mean they're of course they want to go for the win too but yeah no they are they already have their ticket <laughs> so there's there's a couple formalities they got a couple more wins to take but yeah. otter how are you feeling now that we've completed the qualifying aspect of our valorant game changers about these teams that we're going to be seeing next week i'm i'm excited i'm excited there's a lot of question marks coming through i mean for version one they're just going to be scoping it all out scoping it all out <laughs> writing it all down but it, it kind of it's a it's a catch-22 to only fight for second place but but i think uh it's a testament to how consistent and how dominant uh version one have been for the last couple of years really the core at least I mean, they're the powerhouse team for a reason here, but we're going to have to wait a little bit longer until we can see them in the rest of the team square off because that is going to be it for today and for the qualifiers. Thanks, everyone, so much for tuning in. Make sure to be coming back Wednesday for the main event to cheer on your favorite teams and to catch all of the great Valorant Game Changers action. It's been an adventure so far, and it's only going to get better, but uh, that's it for now. So we'll, we'll see you Wednesday. One.